Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, today, I'm going to take a little time to go over some protective items for your home and ways you can implement them. Um, I think it's everybody is really um, focused on protection right now for a lot of different reasons. And I know I've been getting a lot of emails and requests for ideas for protecting the home and family. Um, of course, this has to do with health and not only, um, you know, for the, your, the wellness of yourself and your family, but keeping the environment of your home um, light and positive and um, protected and fresh during this time. I think it's really important since we're all stuck inside so much. We're all together so much more than we used to be. And um, we have so many different um ideas going around right now and concepts and things happening in the world um, that can just sort of make the environment a little heavy in the home. It's a lot to deal with. So let's go ahead and jump into some of my favorite items to use for protection. So I'm going to start with a railroad spike. You can find these. I find mine. Um, you can go to any railroad track and um, as the trains go up and down the tracks, their vibrations will sort of work these out over time and you'll be able to find them sort of lying um, on the stones that are on the tracks. And um, the only thing you can't do is you cannot remove them if they are still in a track, even if they're sticking out because that's illegal. OK, we don't want to cause harm to anybody or cause any issues or accidents. So a great thing to do with these is you can use a one just for the fact that it's iron and iron is protective and that it's four sided. And that also is a number of protection. Um, these are associated with Ogun, who is great for protection. He is the Orisha of protection. Um, so. Uh, the best thing I like to do with these is to take four of them and to and to, to sort of pound them down on each corner of your property to sort of create a um, iron protective barrier of your property. A lot of people will do this to stop from losing their home if they are facing bankruptcy or back taxes, things like that. People are putting a lien on their property. Um, this is a really um, well-known traditional ritual for keeping your home and your property safe and sound and in your in in your domain. So um, yeah, so one on each corner of the property as you sort of you know nail them down with a hammer or push them in if you can. Um, you could state a protection uh, blessing, a protection right prayer of protection, anything like that. Um, the next one we're going to go to is a hagstone. I'm trying to line that up to see if you can see the hole in it. So that is any holy stone. So these um, holes are created by water. All right. So the water constantly dripping or the current constantly pushing on the stone and it creates holes right in the stone. So the reason that these got their protective folklore or power associated with them is that rushing water or flowing water has always been associated with cleansing of negativity and evil. Um, think about, you know, sort of like baptisms or spiritual baths when we take, um, you know, we put herbs in our bath to help us uh, cleanse our bodies. So running water has always had that for thousands of years throughout many, many cultures and religions. The ability to cleanse, purify, protect, and remove any negativity or evil. So a great thing to do with these, you can easily just set these on your windowsills around your home, or you can run a string through them and hang them up um, in, at your thresholds, at your doorways, maybe at your window, um, outside. You could create like a really cool like sort of wind chime. Obviously, it's not chimes, but um, just figuratively, you know what I mean? So I really love their energy, and this is a great, great protective uh, talisman to have around. Um, speaking of baths, we'll go in real quick to, I dropped, I dropped some, <laughs> um, now I gotta adjust my teeth if I can, <laughs> oh, that's funny, um, Okay, so I have some sprigs of basil, rue, and rosemary here. Now, you might want to typically pick a little bit more than this, but you don't have to. You could use this much, and you could boil these on the stove in a couple of cups of water. 
Um, just bring it to a boil and then um, turn it off. Let it sit and steep for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then let that water cool down and add it to your bathtub. And as you're washing, you can sort of um, do a, a prayer or an incantation to um, let healing waters run over you and flush any negativity or illness from your body. You can state something along those lines. But these are pretty fairly common herbs. Um, you could easily do with herbs from the grocery store, fresh ones. You could get mint, basil, and rosemary. Those will be right in your produce section in little packets. So you could get fresh herbs. I do recommend fresh herbs over the dried herbs. Um, dried herbs have sometimes been sitting on the shelf for a really long time. And their potency or their, their ashe, the energy they possess, um, may not may not be so may not be so saturated as it could be. So I really recommend you work with fresh herbs for that. And you can create that type of bath following those exact same instructions for any type of um, any any magical goal. For like road opening, you could use citrus peels like lemon and orange. Um, for healing, you could add like lavender, rosemary. Uh, so you could just change up the herbs and follow the exact same instructions. So another great one is, I have this presented in sort of a couple of ways here, is the iron nails. So a lot of times we'll call, we see these called coffin nails. Um, so a coffin nail is just any nail with a head that's shaped like this. It's four-sided and sort of smaller at the top and bottom you know, and sort of goes out in the middle there. So coffin nails don't really come from coffins. So anybody out there, I hate to, um, I hate to, I hate to break it to you, but that's not really what that means. Coffin uh, nails were called that due to the shape of the head of the nail. So four-sided nails, also sacred to Ogun, um, have long been used for protection. This is, you could use this similarly to the railroad spike. Um, you could push them down uh, into the earth around your home. You could easily put them on your windowsill. You could add these to a witch's bottle. Um, those have been found for centuries. Um, and that's typically just a glass bottle that has broken glass in it, usually broken mirror for protection. So you can reflect back negative forces or entities. Um, some iron nails. Usually the urine of the person who it lives in the dwelling who is doing the work. And oftentimes you'll find things like pins in there, maybe knotted strings, um, maybe other protection items, maybe juniper, some protection herbs, things like that. So like I said, those have been made for thousands of years. We found some that are centuries years old that are in museums. And um, that's a really cool form of magic. I actually made some for my home when my husband was doing some remodeling and I did a couple of them and he built them right into um right into like the walls and the facades for the pillars we were doing. So that's a really cool way that we got to add some protection uh, to our home. So this is a cross I have made by um, someone I know online and she used to have a shop. She doesn't anymore. To, she doesn't, she still has a business, but she doesn't make this type this type of thing anymore. Um, but these are hand forged um, iron nails. And she did this sort of God's eye um, cross that you like learn to do in school. And I, and it has an evil eye bead. So I just thought this is really, really beautiful with like this hand spun wool. So this is another great idea of what you could do with a couple of nails and make one of these and hang it up. Super protective with the evil eye and everything. Um, I have a lot of these hanging around my house. I actually have been giving these away free in orders, the large evil eye talismans. I was going to grab one, um, but it looks like I may have forgotten to. But um, that is a very traditional, those are all over Greece, Turkey, Ethiopia. It is a very, very, very well-known protective talisman. It is like recognizable across the world. Is that vibrant cobalt blue glass with the other layers of white glass and black glass created within it to make the actual eye. So that is believed to ward off the malokyo or the evil eye. Um, the next thing I have is a chicken foot talisman. So this may not be for everybody, obviously. I work with a lot of animal parts. I find that working with animal parts is 
a great way for me to connect with the spirit of that animal and um, pay respect and give honor to it, as well as invoking and um, evoking its energy and its characteristics into my life and into my magic. So um, chicken's feet, this one's made into a lovely talisman with some black hen feathers. Black hen feathers are also known to be protective. That is a pretty common in root work and hoodoo. So this one, we can use this in a couple of ways. You can simply hang it up um, to a, as a warding protective uh, talisman on its own. Um, it's also used in magic physically. If you were setting up work for protection or maybe uncrossing or reversing, and you could physically use this to maybe go down the candle or on your altar space to scratch away the influences the person, the entity, the energy that you are trying to rid your home of, yourself of, your client of, your child, your friend, whatever. So you physically use this to scratch away the energy and to scratch away crossings and hexes. So this works really, really well if you haven't tried it. If you can sort of, um, if you have an aversion to working with um, animal um, parts and pieces, um, I understand that, but I do encourage you. Um, it is a really great way to pay honor and respect and reverence. So um, typically parts of animals that are, that are used like this, same thing with alligator feet, alligator teeth, they would just be discarded. They would be thrown away. Um, they would be waste products. Now, a lot of people eat chicken feet in my, where I currently live, people do not, but in places that I have lived, people certainly do. Um, so it's a way to take that and instead of it getting thrown away and nobody sort of paying attention to it and honoring it, it's a great way to save that and give it the respect that it deserves. Um, another, so a quick one I have is fossils. These will be really hard for you to see. These are just some coral fossils that my kids had found for me. We love to go out and look for fossils together. That is like something we do as a family. We'll go to the beaches and look for them. We'll go to cemeteries and look for them. We'll go to glacial moraines and look for them. We have a lot of glacial moraines where we live. Um, so these are perfect to just set on the windowsill. Where the protective um, folklore comes from with fossils, I'm not totally sure. But if I had to guess, I would say... I was with it being so what happens with a fossil is that the organic matter is replaced with stone. OK, so it's like calcified. And I feel like that idea of it being so um, like so warding and so concrete and so stable and so powerful and so unmovable, I feel like that's where the um, sort of that's where that energy will come from with fossils being protective. So um, like I said, sitting these around your windowsill is a great way to do it. I have them in bowls outside around my property because we just collect so much. I have so many of them. Um, yeah, so little fossils, just if you're outside walking around, sometimes in your driveway, you can find them. Lots of times you'll get like garden stone, you know, to do... Um, landscaping with and you can find tons of them in those i've i've found handfuls and handfuls and bags of things like that so fossils free all of this stuff is actually super super cheap um or free so that's even better um okay we will move on to a couple of my favorites that i all of these things are also um, available on my website so if you're looking for them and you can't find them on your own um they are they are available on my website so we will move on to brick dust i need to refill this apparently we're at 50 percent here um so brick dust has long been used in um the, in Louisiana specifically, um, in New Orleans, um, old brick lots, okay, is where they would hold voodoo rituals. And it was commonly thought that the brick, for, for some reason they were holding the rituals there and they weren't getting bothered by the police, okay? So they attributed the brick as to having um, the, the warding power and why they were being protected. 
So it brings up an interesting thing, right, as to whether things are inherently protective or whether we associate that power with them. And because we attribute that power to them and that creates an idea and a focal point, something we manifest in our mind, if that's whether it's true. I don't really think it matters either way. Um, these are little traditions that I find fun and useful. Um, it's fun to teach kids about them. And the folklore, of course, and the traditions that go behind them, I think is a great thing to learn. I think it's really important to keep our history and our folklore and our traditions alive. Um, whether it's your heritage or not, it's always great to learn about other customs and traditions. And um, so what you would do with your brick dust, I like to just open this up. I go right outside my door and I just sprinkle a line right in front of my door. Now that'll typically last about, mm, I would say about a month before I sort of sweep it away and put down a new one. You can also add this to a protection mojo bag. You can just put a few grains of it in there and it will, it will work the same way. But the idea with brick dust is that anytime you, wherever you lay down a line, anybody who means to harm you or anybody who's evil cannot cross it. So that is a wonderful protection tradition to do for your home. Okay, now I have some black salt. Um, my black salt is actually, you can buy black salt um, online from metaphysical stores. I hate to tell you, it's usually just dyed black. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I prefer to use natural black salt. So it's usually um, from uh, Hawaii. They have natural black salt there. And um, so I like, to, and I mix mine with um, iron filings, rust, some sage. And you could use this much in the same way that you use the brick dust. You could put down a line in front of your home. You can also add it to mojos. Um, some people will sort of create a barrier all the way around their house or maybe put little crosses of it outside because as we do, whether you have anything to do with Christian beliefs or not, the cross is thought to, believe, to be a protective symbol. Um, especially an equal armed cross, not like a cross with its higher on the top for like, for, um, you know, not speaking of like uh, one that you would see for like a crucifix. Um, so that's another great way. Put it outside your gates, your doorways, in your mojo bags. You could put a little under your pillow and sleep with it if you feel like you're having nightmares. Um, those things are really helpful. So another great one. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> I was so prepared. Um, so these are Mexican anil. You can find them online sometimes called blue balls. Um, so this is a copper, copper sulfate, and they're made into these balls like this. And these are really wonderful if you're having spiritual activity in your home or nightmares. Um, and when I say spiritual activity, I want to be very specific. Um, if you have a spirit in your home and it's just sort of like knocking around or whatever, and maybe making some noises or saying hi here and there in some way or another, please don't try to get rid of it. If it's not harming you, please don't harm it. Chances are it has been in your dwelling much, 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 much longer than you have. Um, I believe in spirit, uh, in, in spirit uh, dwelling familiars and dwelling spirits. So um, I believe that there are spirits attached to the home uh, and they have more of a right to be there than we do. So a lot of times people will contact me and they'll say, oh, this spirit keeps annoying me. It keeps blowing my candle out or it keeps knocking on my door. And I go, yeah, but is it hurting you? And they'll say, no. And they'll say, well, then leave it alone. It just wants maybe a little attention. Say hi to it. Say I'll talk to you later. You know what I mean? So these are great. If you have spirit activity that is negative, that is really um, really bothering you in your home, upsetting your children, you know, moving things, causing things to break, things like that, poltergeist. Um, you put one of these uh, in a glass of water, do that four times, four glasses of water. Now I'm all nice and blue. Um, and put one in each corner of the room. You can also put these in a bowl of water and put it under your bed for nightmares. So and that works really well to dispel negative spirits. Put that down. My last one here, super quick, is the trusty, dusty broom. Um, I found this one. Actually, I think my husband found it for me. We like to go antiquing together. And I found this one somebody had obviously handmade with an iron horseshoe in it. 
And I was like, that has my name written all over it. So, um, so it's like they made it into the handle, but a wonderful cleansing when you're sweeping your house, which you already do anyway. So a great way to enhance your magical practice is to work it into the stuff you're doing anyway. Um, sweep from the front of your house to the back. If you want to draw luck in, Okay, and if you have something you want to remove from your house, some negativity or, um, you know, just stank energy, you would sweep from the back to the front and then you would sweep that dirt up and you would flush it down the toilet or throw it away. Okay, don't throw it outside so it just goes outside because then the idea is all that stankness is just going to be outside. The idea is to get rid of it. So throw it out or flush it on the toilet. Okay. So there you have it. Um, I hope that that was um, hopefully at least interesting to you. Maybe you learned one or two things. Maybe you can implement them into your home. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you all again. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Be protected, blessed, well, and healthy.